Well, you uh, mentioned that it's an airplane. I want to correct you and say that it's an ultralight. So it's a part, uh, part 103 legal. According. How did you get the idea to design something like this? I mean, this is totally different than anything I've ever seen before. Uh, well, I've, I've examined the ultralight design for quite a few years, since the uh, uh, early 80s even, and uh, studied them very closely, got very familiar, and, and looked at all the pros and cons of various designs, and gave a lot of thought to what it would take to what I believe would be build the ultimate uh, ultralight airframe with the right combination of features. And so why this style of design? Well, uh, that's, that's a good question. I very much favored the pusher. I always wanted to do a pusher, but I also wanted to build uh, ultralights that had lots more horsepower than what people were uh, accustomed to. And when you do that, you have to put the thrust line uh, very much close to the aircraft CG and also the pilot CG to deal with the conditions that you'd have with you know, various levels of, of thrust going up to extremely uh, high thrust. And then uh, with large horsepower, you've got to have a large diameter propeller. And if you put a large diameter propeller on a pusher, you become, you run into ground clearance issues and clearance with cables and other structure. So I put the uh, engine in the front, and that also keeps the engine closer to the pilot, all more closely knit to the center of lift on the uh, aircraft so that pilot weights don't vary the uh, CG very much as opposed to what it would be in like a pusher type configuration. So an ultralight can be built lighter and stronger in, in the tractor configuration uh, considerably uh, so. Built more compact, you know, lower, more stout, uh, and there's some other advantages too. There's a lot of cases where parts might fall off the exhaust and take out the propeller or someone might lose a jacket or a hat and it'll take out the propeller. So putting the propeller in the front is kind of a, of, of a common sense thing that you need to do to an ultralight to make it accommodate the mistakes that people make, you know, while, while they're flying. Now, why go to the four-wheel design? Oh, that's uh, very good uh, answers for that. The uh, front axle gives me a very wide uh, hard point base to attach the wing cables to so that my cables that attach to the wing are more vertical uh, and then I can keep the wing lower so I've got here probably the lowest wing cable braced ultralight construction that I'm that I'm aware of and and also I'm pontoon ready I've got a pontoon uh, 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 pontoons at home that I'm adapting to this a new kind inflatable extremely lightweight that I want to adapt uh, to this uh, so that I can take advantage of the advisory circular 103-7 weight allowance which allows me to have an extra 60 pounds. When I do that I can use the four cylinder uh, hearth engine with 110 or 105 horsepower or the three cylinder liquid cold hearth engine and still be part 103 legal. What I want to do is set whole new uh, standards of, of flight characteristics for ultralight aviation to make ultralight aviation a true exciting motorsport. Uh, you know, to draw in this new generation of, of motorsports and uh, uh, enthusiasts who want more power because there's nothing better than having an ultralight with lots of power. The more power you have, the more fun you have. It, that's, that's a fact. There's no such thing as too much power. Now, is there any advantage to, to the uh, way the aircraft handles on the ground with the type of mining gear you're using? It's it's big, uh, big improvement. It handles like a go-kart. There's no uh, feeling that you could possibly tip it over. Back in, uh, back in Ohio when I fly it and I can do stuff a lot beyond what I do here, I'll occasionally land on uh, uh, a grass strip and as soon as I land I'll hit the back brakes and kick the wheel and just go sliding sideways through the grass and then end up backwards. All kinds of fun stuff like that you can do with this that I don't think you could do with uh, a tri-gear you know, uh, type. I don't know about the tail wheel but the landing gear on this is very strong and you can just kind of go around like a go-kart. Why the tail that you're using? The uh, inverted V-tail uh, structurally is like a three-post tower that's cable braced uh, of course very short and simplistic so it's the lightest uh, uh, strongest possible tail that you could put on any aircraft uh, but also more significantly 
when I use these high uh, amounts of thrust from these large propellers, I can get that thrust to go through the V, you know, so that I don't pick up any uh, turbulence on my surfaces and, and feel it in, in, in the handlebar. So that was essential, is to, you got to use a, a, a V, inverted V tail and get it up high to get it out of the, of the prop turbulence when you go to high ultralight thrust levels. Now why did you go to wire bracing? Wire bracing is vastly superior to strut bracing or, or cantilever. That, that's a fact. You cannot build a strong, powerful ultralight, uh, at least of this magnitude, without relying on cable bracing. Because these wings are extremely light. You wouldn't believe how light they are, but yet they're incredibly strong because I got these large obtuse angles on, on the uh, cables. It's just incredibly strong. There's no way you could uh, achieve this light weight and strength ratio with anything else. Now that point of control bar controls all of the movement on the airplane. Exactly. All three axes are right here. You only need your hands to fly this. You don't need your feet. I can just do a little movement on there and I can just see what's all happening here. This is the uh, yaw. And I can just use the yaw control and it will very uh, quickly turn and bank and turn just perfectly fine with just yaw. Or I can use just the uh, roll, the ailerons, and it will still uh, uh, roll and turn very well too. When I use both together, it's very responsive. I saw that this morning. I mean, even on that cross one, you had no problem at all, and yet it was gusting. Yeah, it didn't seem to be any, it's just kind of a natural thing flying because it's very intuitive, instinctive, this control system is because it's just like you're grabbing the wings. You know, when you grab these handlebars, you just think you've got your hands directly on the wings, and whichever way you move these handlebars, the wings will very quickly follow the handlebar orientation. Very, very natural. How's the throttle operating? It's uh, off of a uh, Honda CR500 motocross racer, an aftermarket throttle, and it works just like a motorcycle. And it's very uh, convenient because when you do, I'm not going to use the word aerobatic stuff, but when you when you get really aggressive with the handlebars, you just automatically tend to give it a little bit of extra throttle without even thinking about it, and it works great. I have two settings on the throttle for uh, friction. So if I wanted to stay pretty well locked, you know, fly hands off, it'll stay there, but I can still turn the throttle that way. And if I want to really be real manipulative with the throttle, like if I'm doing lots of tight turns and all, and I want to use a lot of different throttle settings, I just have this kicked off. And then I can change the throttle setting as I fly. I like to keep my hand fingers resting on this horizontal cross beam here because it gives you a very good sense of uh, roll orientation. You know, it, it's like a home base to kind of reference. So as long as you're flying with these handlebars level, you don't need uh, the bubble or the yaw string. It flies straight and true just by itself. And there's no sense of P factor, no matter what power setting I use, since my prop blast isn't hitting the tail surfaces, since it's going through the V tail, uh, it, it, you just don't notice any uh, P factor. What are we using for power today? Today, uh, and for quite some time yet, it, I used a Hearth uh, engine. It's a six, 625 cc Hearth engine that I purchased from Recreational uh, Power Engineering. Uh, two cycle engine, of course, uh, two cylinder with dual ignition, which is something long sought for uh, by ultralights, uh, was the dual ignition engine, which was really only available in larger engines that until now you couldn't really put in a part 103 legal ultra. So I've got that. <laughs> advantage but the hearth engine how many horsepower? 65. So what kind of performance do we get out of it using uh, that engine? Uh, the uh, angle of climb is what I sought for most was good angle of climb I think that's a very beneficial uh, feature for ultralights in terms of safety and and fun is having good angle of climb and uh, the speed uh, it's no problem to keep it under the 63 mile an hour uh, speed limit as required by part 103 that's Stall speed. Stall speed uh, is somewhere in the neighborhood of of 25 or below at altitude. In the ground effect, it's very controllable at 20 mile an hour, at least as indicated by the airspeed indicator. So, if somebody wanted to get more information, what's the easiest way to uh, get information on? Uh, my uh, website is uh, www.snedden.m7.com. That's spelled S-N-E-D-D. -D -E e n m7
Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.